Candace Owens is the host of Candace, and we are always happy to have her on the show. Candace Owens, thanks so much Candace Owens, for coming Candace on. Candace Owens, the host of Candace, 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 thanks so much of Candace, 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 Candace,
A lawsuit was filed against the Board of Education in 2007 for, quote, knowingly failing and refusing to protect Candace from harassment from students who left death threats, racial, and sexual remarks on her voicemail. The Stanford Board of Education decided to settle for the amount of $37,500 to Candace Owens and her family. So how does one transition from being the target of hate crimes on not only one, but two separate occasions? Somebody who, according to my research, reached out to the NAACP for help. How does that person transition to be somebody like this? Well, to answer that question, we have to look at the next chapter of her life. In 2015, after moving to New York and leaving her job at Vogue magazine, Candace founded Degree 180. Degree 180 was a marketing agency that offered consultation, production, and planning services. Its site also included a blog where she and other authors would post on a variety of topics ranging from eating disorders, acne, dating, and unsurprisingly, politics. This is where we really get to see a very fleshed out version of Candace's political identity. While most of the articles weren't explicitly political, there were many that delved into political themes. One such example was one titled, News Update. The Republican Tea Party is led by the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter, in this case, referencing the presumptive Republican nominee at the time, Donald J. Trump. I will totally accept the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. In this article, she writes, quote, good news is they, they referring to Republicans, will eventually die off peacefully in their sleep, we hope. And then we can get right on with the obvious social change that needs to happen immediately. In a separate article titled, Outlawing Psychedelics is Harmful to Humankind, she writes, quote, we need to dial back the stigma surrounding drugs. And this sentiment is further encouraged in the article titled, For Christ's Sake, Let Them Smoke Pot Already, where she writes, Is this actually still a debate or topic? Legalize it, tax it, everybody wins and loses. Where she comes on the side of for legalization or at least decriminalization of drug use. But one of the best examples that I believe shows where Candace leans politically is the article titled, Want to Hear Something Gross, where she writes, Fact. The average CEO takes home 204 times more than his or her employees. I kid you not. You can read more about that here. Now here's my guesstimate. The average employee likely works 204 times harder than that respective CEO. Can we just take a moment and really truly discuss this backwards economic paradigm that exists within most companies? Wow. Now, if you're even remotely familiar with the type of rhetoric that Candace currently spews, then you're probably just as surprised as I was when I found this out. Candace Owens, founder of the Blexit movement and one of the most outspoken proponents of the Republican Party. Now back to the question at hand. How does one transition from reasonable takes such as these to the ultra-nationalistic hyper-conservative we see today? Well, to answer that question, we must turn our attention to her next big project, the turning point, if you will. Hey guys, it's Candace Owens. Follow me today on Snapchat to get updates about our new project, socialautopsy.com. Words are real. People don't assign, like, there's no humanity behind what they say. They just think it's not real. Socialautopsy.com launched in 2016, a well-intentioned endeavor brought about by the lived experience of Candace. She claimed the goal was to try to make the internet a safer and better place. But for every cat meme your best friend tweets at you, or for every I miss you comment your grandma leaves on your Facebook wall, there are literally thousands of instances of hate speech being circulated online. Because when communication happens through a screen, and when moments are experienced through a lens, a terrifying extraction takes place. The age of technology and social media has slowly disintegrated individual accountability. The consequences of which are devastating. 
Rebecca Sedwick, the sixth grader, committed suicide last week. Authorities say she suffered nearly a year of cyberbullying. Two girls charged with using Facebook to taunt and bully their 12-year-old schoolmate until she killed herself. They say weeks of constant bullying cost him his life. We are fostering a society of online bullying, social tormenting, and irresponsible sharing. With the ability to privatize social profiles and use pseudonyms in place of real names, it has been a free-for-all. That is, until now. Hey guys, my name is Candace Owens and I am the founder of socialautopsy.com, the first ever search database that aggregates people's social behavior and creates real profiles for them. My team and I came together because we all grew up during this generation of the huge technology boom and we understand the harm that social media like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter has allowed for, which is essentially a dehumanization. How can we bring it back to the if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all, or the old school, say it to my face mentality online. Our answer was simple, through accountability. So what we do is we attach their words to their places of employment, and anybody in the entire world can search for them. What we are doing is figuratively lifting the masks up so nobody can hide behind you know, Twitter handles or privatized profiles. Um, it's all real and it's all researchable. You can still say whatever you wanna say on social media, but you have to be willing to stand by your words. We are asking for your donations so that you guys can help us expand this database. What we wanna do is clean up the internet so that we can make it a safer place for the individuals that are coming up in generations beneath us. Social Autopsy was a website where users could submit screenshots of posts that they found offensive and the site would collect them into an easily accessible profile. It would also operate as a search engine to allow users to see if a specific user had a history of hateful and harmful comments. Now, if you were around during this time of the internet, then you know what it was like. The Gamergate era represented some of the worst aspects of internet culture, and we still see some of its effects today. Social autopsy could be seen as an attempt to prevent further harm and harassment online, but it was met with criticism from both sides of the aisle. Many people thought the Kickstarter pitch was vague and lacked forethought and privacy concerns, and that this service could be potentially used against innocent people. Now, the response to social autopsy could have been people actually worried about privacy, or it could have been that people wanted to maintain their anonymity to keep harassing people online. Nobody really knows for sure, but whatever the actual truth was doesn't matter in this scenario. All that matters is what Candace perceived as the truth. That the vitriolic hatred, racism, and death threats she was receiving because of the project was not coming from the pro-Gamergate, harassing women's side. No, it was coming from the anti-Gamergate people, particularly Zoe Quinn. Quinn, who was the creator of Crash Override Network, a crisis helpline, advocate group, and resource center for people who are experiencing online abuse, reached out to Candace with their concerns. On a phone call, they raised the issue of children potentially being docked through social autopsy and safety concerns for Owens herself from the backlash that she may receive from the project. From there, the conversation took a bit of a turn, and this is where reports diverge. Candace stated that Quinn broke down crying and said, they're going to ruin everything, but Quinn denies this. After a short email correspondence, Candace claims to have started receiving a plethora of racially charged emails to her personal email alongside the one for the Kickstarter. After this, she concluded that only Quinn could have sent these emails. Okay, so editor's note here, there are like three more pages to this script, so we're just gonna cut it right here. Moral of the story is that Candace dived headfirst into the Gamergate conspiracy and concluded that Quinn and Harper were crazy and that there was this huge conspiracy that they were hiding. Truthfully, I can't fully cover that without explaining what Gamergate is, and I'm not gonna do that in this video. So let's just fast forward through all this stuff and get back to the actual content. Candace positioned herself and social autopsy alongside the gamers, and the Twitter account for the project became a platform for further harassment of Quentin Harper. If you were on YouTube at the time, then chances are you remember how intertwined gamer culture was with the anti-feminist, anti sgw anti community. There's a really good 3 arrows video on it that I will link in the description that covers the whole rabbit hole. Because of this, there was an indiscernible link between the gamers, and the anti-SJW ultra-conservatives like Milo Yiannopoulos and Michael Cernovich. Cernovich reached out to Owens and provided moral support, and according to her own words, she became a conservative overnight. She said, quote, I realized that liberals were the actual racists. 
liberals were the actual trolls. the social autopsy fiasco and finding a community in the far right, Candace's platform began to grow rapidly. She created new social media profiles and a Patreon where she can grow her brand. Her first video was a coming out video where she publicly embraces her new political identity. Her subsequent videos where she disregarded white supremacy as an issue after Charlottesville in one, they started off by telling me that they were going to kill me just because I was black. It focuses on the dangers of BLM and another cemented her place in conservative politics. A quick aside, just comparing the two comments from those two comment sections shows the clear cognitive dissonance that these people exhibit. A few months later, on November 21st, 2017, Candace was hired by TPUSA's own Charlie Kirk to be, I kid you not, the Director of Urban Engagement. It is unsurprising that this hiring came after allegations of racism at the organization, but that's besides the point. Candace's career continued to climb as she created new videos and worked with TPUSA, but it wasn't until April 2018 that she hit mainstream. Famous rapper and musician in general Kanye West tweeted, I love the way Candace Owen thinks. Only a month later, Donald Trump, the president of the country, would echo this sentiment by saying that Candace is, quote, having a big impact on politics in this country. She represents an ever-expanding group of smart thinkers which was in quotes for some reason. It's wonderful to watch and hear the dialogue going on. So good for our country. After that, her name became household. Currently, her following puts her in the same sphere as people like Ben Shapiro and even Tucker's sponsored Fortune Carlson. It's undeniable that, not including Kanye, of course, Candace is the biggest, most influential black conservative in this country. From her feud with Cardi B to her denial that racism is a problem while still simultaneously claiming that Democrats are the real racists, it's clear what her motive is. It's a grift. Candace Owens is an agent of white supremacy, the same white supremacy that she claims is not an issue, even when having been directly impacted by it on two separate occasions. She, being a black woman herself, gives credence to these ideas, allowing white people who truly believe these things to feel justified because it's coming from a black person. I'd argue that her rhetoric is even more dangerous than somebody like Stephen Crowder's because she will often hide behind her identity as a shield. She takes any criticism from the black community as a perceived attack on her racial identity. Her historical revisionist mindset, like claiming the Southern strategy was a myth, that have been said over and over again about black conservatives when they have the audacity to think for themselves and become educated about our history and the myth of things um, like the Southern switch and the Southern strategy, which never happened. Or saying that the economic downfall of the black community after slavery was historically because of socialism and socialist policies and not Jim Crow. My dear sister Candace, I would argue that welfare again now is it was not socialist. It was a an attempt to intervene given the failure of capitalism to provide jobs it was of socialist. a living wage it was a for people. It was not socialistic it was absolutely at all. Socialist, Social and you know that. And no, you know that our community, that, after the first socialist. 100 years, doctor, doctor, come that's on. Not 100 socialist. years after slavery, the black community was doing better. We were going up, up, up. Then suddenly they socialized our community via welfare policies, and the black community started going down, down, down or saying that Hitler's only problem was trying to globalize is pure insanity. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. Happy Monday. Hitler was just trying to make Germany great again. Candace Owens is okay with that. You don't just become a conservative overnight. There's no way somebody who, one, recognizes economic inequality, Two, wants to destigmatize drug use and legalize marijuana. And three, recognizes the insanity and disruptive nature of the Republican Party, which is disregard all of their moral principles and advocate for policies that truly hurt the black community. Unless, of course, money was involved. And considering the platform that she has after converting to conservatism, I'd say she earned that 30 silver. <laughs> 